This episode is an update on the electric Tesla powered TVR, AKA Wedgie. And I've got Ralph in the background and he's gonna tell us all about what's happening. Let's get into this. That's not the engine that came out of the TVR. <laughs> no, I don't that's... know, what, what engine is that? Oh, that's... that's the engine out of the Jag. Look how massive it is. It's huge. Huge. And just got a little bitty motor in there. Yes. And massive batteries everywhere. Massive. Massive. Jungle is. We're so close, Ralph. We're so very, close. Very close. So close. Tell us what's happening, because I know I really want to know what's going on, obviously. And I'm sure there's at least one person out of the charge heads. Uh, person. Uh, yeah. Well, we've been doing uh, lots of work on different things. So there's, it's not just the EV conversion, it's converting all the lighting systems and all the other bits and pieces, the interior heater and uh, uh, the heated seats and all these sort of things. So we've got a, a body controller that we're using a little Arduino circuit for. So we've been testing that and getting that all working at the same time as running through all the safety checks on the high voltage system. Yeah, I, I did, sorry to stop you there, Ralph. I did see every time I come here, there's more wires. And I have to show everyone this because, wow. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of work that's going on here. And I just wanted to show people how complicated it can get. So this is very different from an ordinary EV conversion where you're just doing the powertrain. We're doing the whole vehicle electrical you just, system. You just put it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're, we're making new fuse boxes. So we've got all the wiring apart and we're doing lots of test and development. So we've got things, uh, we've got temporary connectors that we call in the trade, we call them chocolate blocks, because uh, they look a bit like a chocolate block. And that allows us to make some connections, change things around really easily, and it's just a really great way of developing things really quickly. So we're going through the whole wiring loom, uh, getting all the bits and pieces working. Uh, once we're happy with that, we'll then bundle it all together, make permanent connectors. We tend to use Deutz connectors because they're quite nice. Are you going to bundle it with uh, some sticky tape or...? No. No? No, we no. do it properly. So do it all properly. goes into proper conduit. Conduit, yep. Um, there we go. It'll all be uh, properly loom taped and, um, and done properly. So then it'll have proper waterproof connectors on it. So it's all OEM standard stuff. You'll have two uh, boxes under there, two fuse box and relay boxes. Uh, one in the engine bay and one in the boot. We've been working through the high voltage system. We did have all of this complete earlier in the week and then we've taken it apart again. Yeah, because uh, there's, there's some down there which has got the battery disconnect, which obviously for safety, if you don't know what yeah. one of those is and you're doing EV conversion or thinking about it, please look it up. And what's your, uh, what's your website again, Ralph, uh, advice and uh, recommendations around EV conversions? I always forget and I like to highlight it. <sighs> Shocking. It's the EV Repower Association. That's it. So we've been going through it and we found that one of the systems, although it goes through all the isolation checks uh, when we use um, a normal isolation meter, you know, this will put a thousand volts through the cables and we can check that the resistance is well above sort of 50 million ohms. And why do we, because this is running 350 volt, yeah. Why do you have to run a thousand volt for it? Because that sounds a bit OTT. It's just to make sure that there's no chance of any of the insulation breaking down later on. So if you imagine you'd got, um, we'd, we'd missed a cable and it had got crushed when the body went back onto the chassis, for instance. Well, yeah. It hasn't, we've checked. Good. But if we had missed that, the insulation might have got squashed way for thin. Way for thin. So if we just check it with a multimeter, it will say, right, there's, there's you know, it's open circuit, there's no problem there. Yeah. But when we actually start putting high voltage through there, it'll actually bridge across that gap and we'll start to get a fault. Got you. Now with uh, driving the vehicle around, you get vibration, that little wafer thin fault might <sighs> wear through and go wrong. Yeah. So if we run it out to a thousand volts, there's very little energy. So if there is an issue there, the voltage just collapses down. But it just means that we're checking all the wiring way above the voltage you'll be using it at. So we've yep. got that safety margin built in. Uh, and although all of this passed that, when we actually powered it up, we're finding some of the subsystems when they've actually got um, currently 350 volts um, going through them, they're starting to fail our isolation monitoring. So we have isolation monitoring built into the vehicle that it does all the time. Okay, so uh, this is like a snagging operation that you're doing to make sure everything is yeah. safe. And yeah, so one of the high voltage components is um, starting to fail that uh, when we power it up. So we're going through a process of just finding out what's going on with that. And we might have to talk to the supplier and find out where they're 
while our system is doing that. That's not going to power the Tesla motor, is it? That, that 12 volt battery, what, what's that for? So the 12 volts there is just so that you can turn it on. Excellent, that'll um, be important. I think it will be important, yep. yeah. So yep. we're just going through uh, sorting out the 12 volt distribution system. So we've got some mega fuses. Mega fuses, uh, that mega sounds fuses. cool. Yeah, mega fuses just there. Yeah. So the only bit that's underfused is the one that goes from the positive terminal down to there. What's so mega about them? Uh, they're just mega. Excellent. Um, and they then feed the subfuse boxes. So where you might have a fuse box with a 10 amp fuse on it, the wire that goes to that fuse box is a big chunky wire and that's got a fuse here. So if that wire, say you have a crash or something like that and that wire gets crushed, it won't set fire to the car because it's shorted out because this fuse here will blow. <laughs> All electric cars set fire. Uh, so, you yeah, know, that's what this, we're told. yeah, absolutely. All yeah. the time. And I did notice that you, uh, you've changed my lights. It's gone from being, uh, old school to, uh, they're the ones that you put in Land Rovers, aren't they? Yeah. So again, it's, it, uh, the TVR used a generic seven inch <laughs> headlight. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I just borrowed it from, oh, uh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, I'm just waiting for you to buy some nice ones. Ah, okay. so. Uh, obviously, we're converting all the lights to LED, so the wiring can only carry the current for LED. Yeah, it's much lighter wiring, takes up less space, less weight. Uh, so we needed to test it out, um, and all of this lot works. Uh, so I just did, did they work? Time. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so uh, you've un you've unplugged everything now, so you can't turn them on, can you? <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. I ruined it. I should have let that just flash at you. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So yeah, wink at me. Pardon? Yes. Okay. Ralph, why has my Orion BMS2 shrunk? Did you put it in the wash or the tumble dryer? What happened? Yes, yes, we put it on a hot cycle and unfortunately it just shrunk. Oh dear. Basically it's multiplied. So because we've got a split battery system, we've got one battery pack here and another one in the, in the, uh, the back. Yeah. We've split the BMS, so there's one here. Ooh, okay. Um, so they're multiplying. They're You've been multiplying. breeding them. Yeah. Right. Um, so there's one here that looks after the front battery. That's the master BMS. Yeah. And then this is a uh, slave BMS that goes in the rear of the vehicle. And they talk to each other down Orion's own communication bus. Right. So uh, they, uh, it's a proprietary system, so it turns into one system. Well, what it means is that we don't have any cell tapping wires going from the back of the car to the front of the car. Right, okay, so from uh, resistance and isolation nightmare and extra wiring <laughs> yeah. and all the rest of it, right? Yeah, it's just a safety thing. So that okay. all the high voltage stuff is contained within the battery pack itself. Right, okay. Oh, it's all hanging down, like um, streamers. Yeah. How's it looking under here? Oh, look at this. Yeah. I, I definitely need one of those because the amount of times that I bottom out in my Tesla is uh, frequent. Yeah, so we've still got a bit of work to do. Uh, these will be replaced with uh, button head uh, Allen bolts that will go upwards. Yeah. So um, there won't be anything protruding through the bottom. Yeah, that, that, that might catch a few things <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, it might. Uh, there's a few other bits and pieces to sort out. Um, so, but it's coming together. Um, all the high voltage cabling's all secured to the side with loads of clamps. Ah, let's have a look. Um, uh, well, you probably can't see no. it. No. Well, that, that's, that's a good thing then. Because yeah. every time I see an EV conversion, well, a lot of the time I see orange cables protruding and it worries me. Yeah, we um, don't do that. No. There we go. So, There's, yeah, that's nicely... Uh, yeah, so these are the ones that go um, between oh. the two battery boxes. So there's the... <coughs> charger. That's the yeah. onboard charger, etc., which will have a, a shield around it, so that will effectively be in its own box to keep it nice and tidy. Not, uh, we're not water cooling it? Yep, that'll be water cooled. Ah, okay, so, so here's the pipes going through the back of that. Couple well. of nipples there. Yeah, same to you. We've got the orange conduit. Yeah, so, uh, that's so it's the three phases coming from the charger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so, from the charging port. Yeah, so that's one of the water pumps. So that water sure? pump does the yeah. rear battery box. And there's, uh, oh, it's not there at the moment, but there's another one that goes there, which does the... I can't, um, but that's like off. kind of like in midair a bit there, isn't it? Do you like it? Yeah, that's quite cool. Yeah. And is there going to be any protection for this up here? Yeah. So basically there'll be a, a, a plate across this area up and that will be protected as well. Nice. So the whole thing will be shielded. 
Nice. I know that a lot of people with EV conversions have issues with is the DC charger on yes. the EV conversion. And funnily enough, on the EV conversion Facebook group, or one of them, the main one powered by Felton, not sponsored by, there, there was someone that put about making sure if you've got DC power, making sure you've got cooling on the batteries. Yeah, I absolutely. I don't know where I'm going with that other than that's important. But so, you're right, it is. Yeah, absolutely. A few people asked me what type of DC charger connection it was because a lot of people use the Felton one or they use a BMW one that can be hacked. But which one did we use? So the one we've got is made by a company called TE Connectivity. Right. Um, so we, we use quite a lot of their stuff. The other one we can use is Amphenol. Uh, that sounds like a banned drug or something that's probably something been like approved that. in America. But it's those bits that supply the OEMs like BMW and oh, stuff okay. like that. You went straight the to the source. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Nice. It's proper OEM quality, brand new. I know you like secondhand stuff. Uh, generally, but when it comes to charging, I'd say yeah. probably new is probably best. Yeah. What is the usable battery on this vehicle? Because it's got 40 kilowatt hours of MG ZS mm. battery modules, which, are, which is from SIAC, which are CATL modules, right? They are, yes. So what is going to be the actual usable battery power on this vehicle? To an extent, it's up to us. Okay. Um, where I've set it is 35. Right. Um, and the reason for that is you've got a, a battery, you've got a load of cells, and you could charge them up to 100%. Yep. And then run them through a resistive load and just drop them right down until there's nothing left in them. Right, okay. If you did that repeatedly, you would shorten the life of that battery massively. Yep. The other problem you've got is when you're running that low part of the state of charge, the voltage is dropping all the time and it drops to a point where it's not usable anymore. Yes, we saw that in the last episode with Russ's Lotus Elise because one of the uh, modules went down to zero because it was a faulty cell. Ooh, so right. yeah, he's, he's fried a few batteries on his, uh, okay. uh, on through, his car. Through experimentation. Uh, yeah, so go back and watch it if you haven't seen it because it's a really good video. So. We don't run the battery from 100% to 0%. A, because that low energy area, we can't actually use it. The voltage is too low to do anything useful with. And B, because we'll just ruin the cells really, really quickly. Right. So what we do is we put a, a limit how high we charge them. Yeah. And on your car, I've set it at 90%. Okay. So when your dashboard says it's full, the cells are actually only at 90%. Right, to protect it, got it. And then we'll discharge it, and then this car, I'm gonna set it to initial, and we'll see how it goes, but I'm gonna set it to 20%. Yep, so you need some space at the top, space at the bottom to protect the battery, and um, you're probably gonna go on to say about the inverter, won't you, Ralph? Yeah, so the inverter will trip out at a certain voltage. Now, if you imagine you're driving down the motorway, and we're running right down to that lower voltage limit, and then you put your foot down, you want more power, as the current increases, the voltage available from the battery will drop due to its internal resistance, and that could make it trip out. So we always make sure we've got a safety margin, a buffer zone, so that um, it can't do that. Awesome. No, thanks for explaining that. Really, really helps. And hopefully it will help many other people too. Lovely. So that's the update on the TVR this week. Don't forget, we've got a modified EV meet on the 13th of October. That's next Sunday, it would be Wednesday when this comes out, so it'd be this Sunday, and that's in Leicestershire. So keep an eye out on the socials, Facebook charge heads, and it's also part of the uh, modified Test Model 3 Facebook group as well. So if you've got an EV, modified EV conversion, or you just wanna come down and chat about EVs, come and check it out. And it's at two o'clock, so see you there.